This is WOW Radio. Seems the presenter of Blue Please has finally got over his cold. Yes, Father, he doesn't sound like a supermarket attendant anymore. Yes, although you do, you silly fool. Oh no, you've insulted me! Ha! Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be alarmed. A cynical Brit has been allowed on the air with a microphone. You will listen, or the kitten we have hostage will be forced to fight a giant badger. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a blue please. Enjoy. <laughs> wow. Radio. Yes, folks, it is I, it is Turtle Biscuit. And I'm over enthusiastic today. I can finally breathe again. Do you have any idea what two weeks of smegging cold is like in the middle of summer? I'll tell you what it is. It's bloody unpleasant. So, I'll have to make up for the two weeks of feeling sniffly and sorry for myself. Right now, right today, here on Wild Radio. This is, of course, Blue Please. If you haven't tuned in before, and you don't know what to expect, well, you're in for a horrible shock, probably. It's one guy with a microphone with a lot of cynical views and a few features and news and stuff like that. It's all good. People listen to it, and that's always the good thing. (sighs) Ah, we are back. Thank God for that. Okay. The first order of the day. Some of you may or may not be aware that every now and again, patch notes escape... I don't know how. Apparently they get leaked. What they get leaked from, I really don't know. Maybe they keep them on the bowl. Poke little holes in it. But, patch note leak. And, looks like we have leaked patch notes for you today. That's going to be one of the big topics. I've got all the patch notes here. If you haven't seen them, then I shall inform you of all the interesting things. If you have seen them, then I'll discuss the interesting things and see if we can get anything anything out of it. It's a good question because quite frankly these patch notes are going to be wine filled and I kid you not we're talking Chardonnay Jacob's Creek Salomon Chardonnay 1991 sort of wine here not your average run of the mill supermarket plonk it's not good. Of course I have a special guest in the studio and it's my desk fan say hello desk fan there don't know if you've actually heard that but never mind it's keeping me cool today, and that's why I'm not sitting down in the sweltering, horrible heat, dying. Eh. Anyway. Okay, other stuff coming up on the show. Of course, we have the stuff about the 1.6 patch. There's going to be a hell of a lot of stuff on that. There are other topics to discuss. We are, do, of course, have rap in the forums. Special edition this week. It's only got two raps, but... The last ones are long, and so I think that counts. News on an exclusive special offer, which I'll tell you about a little bit later on the show for all you Wowbies. Which is always nice when we get stuff for playing Wow. Special benefits, that kind of thing. You'll also find it's quite handy for bypassing the awful, awful Blizzard patch uh, software. We also have a new feature, which today we shall be calling... Bug Watch. Yes, Basically, we kind of got reprimanded because we don't have enough educational stuff on this show. Seemingly, it's now a crime to be, well, funny, cynical, and just generally pointless for two hours. So, we'll have to educate you. And in Bug Watch, we will be highlighting the silliest and worst bug of the week. And we found a pretty corking bug this week. Speaking of corking, Australians, you suck at cricket. How you lost to England, I really do not know. If the Americans are tuning in, this is the game we play instead of baseball. 
It's basically got three stumps stuck in the ground, and you run from post to post, but you've got to hit the ball. Yeah? Kind of same as baseball, but not with all the silly running around and all the World Series stuff, even though you only play it over there, but never mind. Aussies, you suck. You lost to England. We're the worst thing on the planet. We really are the worst team. All right. Anyway, enough talk about that. Let's get on with WoW. Other features coming in the show, of course, a little bit of nubcake news. Ask the Murloc. He's on form as usual. And it was of the week. So, straight to the primary part of the day. 1.6 notes. Yes, it's always nice to read these kind of things. Right, let me put a disclaimer in there. Are, these are leaked patch notes. They may or may not be accurate. Usually they are, but don't make any assumptions. They may or may not be there. So, the big news is, of course, as you probably will have been expecting, the Blackwing Lair is getting released. New level 60 content, so they can start stop whinging. It's a 40-player raid dungeon, apparently. So we're talking MC kind of level here. There are rumours that it is going to be more difficult than Molten Core. And the description says there will be many new encounters and tempting rewards awaiting the intrepid adventurer. Interesting. Seemingly it will be found at the top of Black Rock Spire. So, whole pile of instances right there. Anyway. So yeah, Blackwing Lair. There's not much more to talk about Blackwing Lair other than the whole thing we've been kind of covering for the past couple of weeks. The whole concept of level 60 content, or the lack of, if you're complaining about it. Well, you've got a new instance, so you've got two new instances for your level and a battleground since launch. And that's not too bad, and there are more on the way. There'll also be that new casual instance, Zulgarub. Because, let's face it, Blackwing Lair's not going to be casual, but in reality, if you want the best rewards, you can't be casual. And we discussed casual players last week, and it was a fantastic little post by Thungoth who, if you don't know, is the European community manager. Posts on our forums quite a bit. Locks a lot of threads, basically. Usually for capitals in the title, but we'll let that slide. Anyway, what he said was, high-level PvP stuff was not aimed towards the casual player. Now, this may seem obvious to some people, but imagine the uproar if that was actually said on the American forums. There would be a riot! I tell you, we're talking, like, full-scale looting here. Looting, pillaging, possibly a little bit of drinking as well. But this is going to be high level wave content, and there will be casual content coming. But if you're a casual player, you can't expect to get everything. Which is why you go and get the Ice Barbed Spear. Easy. Don't bother knocking out, we're going to get an Ice Barbed Spear. Little discussion we had last week. Discussing the merits of the Ice Barbed Spear versus the Arcanite Reaper, and we came to the conclusion that yes, the Arcanite Reaper for your standard Mortal Strike Warrior build is the best option, due to its damage and its speed. And its attack power, obviously. But the Ice Bob Spear is a damn good alternative. So, casual players need not complain. Now, other than that, and a few other interesting things, which I'll get onto later, the big thing about the patch notes is going to be two talent resequences. Not so much resequences, but the Warriors and the Warlocks are going to be getting a free, as I said, free talent respec on the basis that their two of their end tier talents are getting changed. Warlocks first. Let's see. The new talent is going to be replacing Master Conjurer. It's in the Demonology tree, and let's face it, that tree could use some work. And it's called Master Demonologist. And what it's going to do is it's going to grant both the Warlock and the summoning, Summon Demon in question an effect as long as that demon is active. The effect granted depends on the type of demon summoned. Ho-hum, a little bit of a mystery there. So we can expect anti-mage slash mana related things for the Fell Hunter. We can request, well, we can probably respect some kind of charm or stealth thing for the succubus. Stuff like that. So, you're going to get a talent resequence there. Inevitably, of course, there was some whining. But then again, there's always whining. So, we don't really deal with whining here on Blue Please, because everyone knows about whining. 
And when it comes down to whining, it's very easy to whine. And it's very difficult to actually be genuinely constructive and positive about the game you're paying and playing for. So let's face it, if we didn't like the game, we wouldn't be playing. So what's the point in whining? It is a video game. There are things wrong with it. Yeah, big deal. Things wrong with every game. And the whining came into effect with the Warriors' new change. Now, Shield Discipline, which is the top tier protection talent, is getting removed. And it's being replaced by a new talent. Shield Slam. And what it does is this. It slams the target with your shield, causing damage, and has 50% chance to dispel one magic effect on the target. It also causes a moderate amount of threat. It requires the purchase of the Concussion Blow talent. Well, the start with that is obviously going to affect those with the protection build, because they may have to get this other talent to get this tier thing. Having said that, probably won't affect them too much. Bearing in mind, if you're specking protection, the chances are you've already got that anyway. Now, I've been reading a few discussions on this, and the decision is split. One side says this is a great talent, and it's finally, you know, finally got a end tier talent worthy of comparing to Fury and Arms. The other side says this is useless, I preferred shield discipline, etc, etc. Well, there you go. There have been changes. It's exciting to see changes. Whether it's necessary is a different matter, but I certainly think the protection talent and certainly the demonology tree, there's no two ways about that. The demonology tree needed some love. And it's getting some. And rightly so. So it's good to see Blizzard being positive and proactive regarding talent trees that don't necessarily match up to the normal cookie cutter build. Now, let's get some of that on a few other, a few other classes as well. That would be appreciated. Let's get, give us some more builds. Because we don't all want to fit into the cookie cutter. Especially not when it comes to a warrior. Let's face it, Fury Warrior, and this brings me on to the next topic, is not the preferred warrior spec. Your preferred warrior spec for PvP is Arcanite Reaper Mortal Strike build. Axe special Specialization. Now they've changed it, at least when it comes to a Fury channel. There is a Fury talent, and it's called Bloodthirst. It is the end of tree talent for the Fury tree. And it says the design has been changed. Bloodthirst is now an instant melee attack that causes damage equal to 30% of the warrior's attack power. In addition, the next five successful melee attacks will restore health. Interesting, it's a double whammy there. So you've got yet another instant attack. That's always good. We like our instant attacks, especially when it comes to fighting mages when you usually don't have the time to get in more than one or two hits before they will blink or use various crowd control spells. And the next five successful melee attacks will restore health. Now, I assume that's not going to be time limited, so that will be quite handy. And a lot of people are saying that this is more useful, which is good. So hopefully that's the way to go. Now those are the changes as far as walks and warriors go. Now here's one which I really could potentially get upset about because this directly affects my build. And that's always the way, isn't it? If it affects your build... Oh no! We can't do that. If it affects anyone else's build, oh it's fair enough. But if it affects your build, no way! Righteous Fury. No. Now, what's happening is Fire Mage is getting a direct nerf. There's no two ways about this. It is a direct nerf. And the nerf is this. Ignite. Which, if you don't know, those who haven't played a Fire Mage build. Ignite is a talent which allows up to 40% extra DOT after a critical hit with a fire spell. This DOT lasts for 4 seconds, and if you put all 5 points of the talent, does an extra 40% on top. Very handy talent, especially considering the mana efficiency compared to Arcane is not necessarily as good. It's a very good way to pull a mana efficiency and some very, very nice burst damage with the Fire Mage build. Ignite is becoming dispellable as a magical effect. So basically, that's a direct nerf 
but the Fire Mage versus any group with an attentive Priest or Paladin, or of course Priest or Paladins directly. Bit of an issue right there. And there is uproar. Has to be said, total uproar. So that's not too good. I mean, that's a direct nerf to me. Now, I'm going to take a more positive view on things, because if you've heard of Blue, if you heard Blue Please before, you know, we don't go into pointless rants and pointless whining, because it's a waste of time, and it's not what you want to hear. So I'm going to take a more positive view on things. It's a damn powerful ability. However, it takes only four seconds to proc the full amount of damage. It takes two seconds to do 20%. And that's painful enough. As a priest, if you're in the middle of the cat and you eat one of those, you're in trouble. Because by the time you've got your... You've realised, sort of... Obviously, you're going to have to have some good reaction times here. Once you realise that you've been hit by the Ignite, and obviously bearing in mind lag as well, the effect may not necessarily appear, you have to go and remove your magical... And remove that magical effect on you. Or, of course, if you're a paladin, use your cleanse ability. Not everybody is going to be able to pull that off. And I think, to be honest, in heated PvP, that is going to be one of the last things you're looking at, is your remove magical effect. <coughs> That's often used in PvE, especially in instances, because there's plenty of magical effects being thrown around. In PvP, you are more interested in killing the other guy. So it's quite possible that this nerf is not going to be as harmful as everyone believes. But the one problem I have with this nerf is this. Mods exist which allow you to effectively program this mod to remove magical effects and curses as soon as they appear. Not only that, but you can program it to do that against in group PvP as well. Which, quite frankly, is a little bit of a kick in the ass. Now, I've always been against bot-style mods. Because that's terrible. Automatically playing a character with no actual effort involved. But macros. Same principle as in Star Wars Galaxies, where you had to use macros to grind up your trade skills. And you just leave your character on for a few days. Just macroing your trade skills. Highly dull. And no skill or effort required. Not good. Not the kind of thing you want to be promoting as far as I'm concerned. And if Blizzard has any sense, they will disable the ability to use these automatic mods. This includes things like Totem Stomper, for instance. That automatically drops totems for you. And I have this to say to anyone that uses these kind of mods. If you're not attentive enough, and you're not good enough, and you're not experienced enough to use the abilities as they're given on your own, then I would strongly suggest you stop playing your class right now. Because you're a weakling. You are relying on scripts and programs and mods to make up for your incompetence. And I say die, burn in hell for such horrible, horrific abuses of the mod system. I thank Blizzard for allowing mods into the game. Very, very good, but as usual, more on spoiling it with their easy mode. It's cheap and I do not like it. And on that note, we're going to go to the first song of the night. Still coming to the show, you're of course listening to Blue Please with Total Biscuit here on WOW Radio. Nubcake News, satirical news program. A little bit of rapping at the forums. The Bug Watch, Imbecile of the Week. And of course, Ask the Murloc. Here's a little bit of System of a Down, folks. This is taken from their new album, Mesmerize. And the track is called Radio Video. You listen to Blue Please here on WOW Radio. Enjoy. Enjoy. 